Welcome to lecture 25, for loops. So as I mentioned in the last lecture, for loops are, are another type of loop. So that means that it repeats a set of code a certain amount of times. Now, in the last lecture, I mentioned the difference between definite and indefinite loops. Definite loops were loops that basically terminate at a set point in time. By reading the code, we can say, okay, run this code five times, 10 times, 20 times. It's a set number. Whereas an indefinite loop is a loop that we don't know how many times it will run. However, it should eventually terminate, maybe by user input or some kind of other factor. So in the last um, extra, um, in the last lecture, we looked at a program that it basically keeps track of a running total. So if I type in 5, 10, 15, 20, we'll add those all together and keep track of it. Once I typed in maybe negative 1, the, the loop would terminate and it would print the running total. So the user had complete control of when the loop would basically stop. By entering negative 1, it stopped. Otherwise, it kept on adding and, kept, and then it kept on running the loop. That type, that type of system is an indefinite loop because we don't know when it will end in the code. It's completely up to some other factor. In that case, it was the user. So a for loop is, a, like I said, another type of loop. However, the for loop shines. It really shines when it comes down to definite loops. The for loop is the perfect loop to use if you want to say, okay, execute this statement 10 times, exactly 10 times. The for loop is the best bet. Now, don't get me wrong, the while loop could work also. And in, in the first lecture in this section, we looked at creating a program that printed hello five times. Even though we had to create these three separate components, we could still do it with the while loop. Now, basically, the, the for loop takes those three components that are necessary and combines them together into the declaration of the for loop. It's basically a shorthand for a while loop definite loop. So anytime you want to do a definite type of loop, I highly recommend you use a for loop. So that's the first thing I want to do. I want to show you the difference between creating the while loop that prints hello five times and the for loop that prints hello five times. So let's start off by creating the while loop. So let's say int x equals zero. Now this keeps track of how many times the loop has ran. While x is less than five, I want this code to run. I'm going to say console.write line hello. Every time it runs, I need to increase x by 1 so that I know when the loop will actually run. It keeps track of how many times the loop actually ran, thus making this eventually become false and the loop will terminate. So if I run this, we can see it prints hello five times, which is correct. Now, I want to make the for loop and show you the exact uh, how it works exactly using a for loop and how they compare with each other. So. The syntax of a for loop is the for keyword. Now inside of the parentheses goes the entire three components that are necessary. The three components are the counter control loop, the condition, and the alter statement. They all go inside of the for loop parentheses. That's the difference between a while loop and the for loop. It combines all the necessary components together. But besides that, there's no difference really. So the first component is our counter control variable. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero, semicolon. So you use semicolons to separate the three components. So int i equals zero, semicolon. Now the condition. As long as i is less than five, that's your condition, semicolon. The last condition is the alter, which is i plus plus. So notice how all three components are here but they're all compacted into the de actual declaration of the for loop. So we have int x equals 0, int i equals 0. Condition x is less than 5, condition i is less than 5. Alter x plus plus, alter i plus plus. So all three components are there in order to make a, a definite loop work, but they're all just put inside of the header of the for loop. Now the only thing you need in your body is the actual statement. So constant.write line, hello. So if I go ahead and comment this out and just use the for loop, you can see it prints hello five times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So it's the same exact thing. It's just a shorthand and combining the while loops definite version, and then you can use a for loop. If I made this 10, it instantly works. Now it prints hello 10 times. So like I said, 
if you want to use a definite loop, something that executes a set amount of times, like this, the for loop is the way you should go. You can use the while loop. Don't get me wrong, you can use the while loop. However, the for loop is slightly better. Now, you can also do things like, like we did with the while loop. Like when we simulated an infinite loop, you can also do that with a for loop. In that case, we just don't put anything in here. We'll just do semicolon, semicolon, which basically just represents that each section is empty and saying, okay, make that an infinite loop. So if I run that, you can see now it will run forever. So that, so basically this is an infinite loop version using the for loop, but I'm going to leave that in. So the last thing I want to do in this exercise is just to show you a more practical example of printing the hello. I want to get the user involved and I want to ask the user how many times do you want to print hello and then whatever they enter in I'll print that amount using a for loop. So let's start off by saying console.write line enter an amount of times to print hello and I'll, then I'll say int amount equals int.parse console.readline now I have the amount, and now I'll just use that amount in my for loop. So I'll say for int i equals zero, that's the counter control variable, semicolon, as long as i is less than amount. Before we set an actual number, we said as long as i is less than five, that will print it five times. So by saying as long as i is less than the amount, that will print it depending on how whatever the amount is, so whatever the user types. So I'm going to say as long as i is less than amount, then i plus plus. That I++ plus plus is necessary to making this condition eventually become false, which makes the loop actually end, um, I mean exit. So that I++ plus plus is really important. The last thing we need is just to print hello. And that's, that's really it. So if I run this program, enter amount of times to print hello, I'll say 50. Enter. And now notice how it printed it 50 times. I'm going to do a smaller amount to show you that it actually works. I'll say 2. Hello, hello. It prints it twice. So in, using a for loop, we can get user input and make it a little bit more robust like this.